All right, so gonna be continuing on with uh, kanji today. Uh, kind of we're gonna get shorter and shorter as we go along because uh, basically going up in stroke order and you know year 12 kanji it's there's just not some crazy kanji in there which have got lots and lots of strokes. So we're doing nine, I believe, wait, nine and ten today. Is that right? Uh, yeah. I think 10, 11 today. Can't quite remember myself. Let's have a look here. Yeah, 10, 11. Cool. Okay. All right. So there's a Google Doc linked in the description. I would uh, recommend you guys open it up. Everything I'm going to be going through is in the Google Doc. So let's get started. Okay. Alright, so these are the ones we're going to be uh, doing today. We got Natsu, Ie, mm, Taka, I mean really Takai, but Toki, Kaku, これ Ko ですね. Ko, Shu, Shimeru, Oshieru, and I mean Korogaru or something like that, but we really only have to know it as 10 today. Okay, so uh, another season. We've done quite a few seasons already. I think, is this the last one? Yeah, I think that's all. I mean, winter. Yeah, we did winter a while ago. So, yep, yeah, this is our last season. All right, Natsu, probably the hardest one to write as well. But, uh, you know, I always recommend you look this up in... Um, some dictionary or some website which has got kakijun, okay, so the stroke order. Um, you can just type kanji yomi or kanji kakijun and then you'll find a website which will do it for you. Lots of apps as well um, and the app store can do this for you but I would always recommend uh, anytime you come across a new kanji, look it up in the uh, dictionary which shows you the stroke order and follow it and try and write it out like five or six times following exactly that stroke order because it's quite important. All right, so we don't have to worry about any of the onyomis for I mean, pretty much all of these seasons. I think we haven't learned any onyomis. We just have to learn the kunyomi, okay? So this is natsu. All right, so it just means summer, and you know a word like natsu yasumi, summer vacation. This will uh, come up a fair bit in our Japanese exams. All right, next one, kind of a good one, actually. Um, we have ie, oh, I went too far, sorry, uh, ie, okay. Now, notice there is a, a bit of a pronunciation change between uh, ie and ie, 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 all right? Now, this might not seem like a big deal uh, for, for us, but for Japanese people, they really can hear the difference between these two sounds, okay? So make sure when it's ie for no, just no, notice we have two e's at the beginning there. So it really are kind of like over pronounce them because it might sound silly to you, but to a Japanese person, this makes all the difference between no and house or family. All right, I highlighted uchi here as well. It's not super important, but you know, I mean, it's, so, it's very hard to, to kind of tell you which ones you should learn, which ones you shouldn't. I mean, uchi is possible to come up in year 12 though, so I would recommend you learn it. But all these are good readings to learn. And of course, ka, okay? Now all these, again, all these, uh, meanings in English are good to know. So house, home, family, you know, this is the main one a lot of you people would be aware of. But also notice that we can put it on the end of certain things and it's like a job or an expert in that thing. So uh, kazoku, you know, is our family. It's a good word to learn. So ka is our house or home. And zoku, this is like a race or like a tribe. So you can kind of see where that's there. Uh, right, and we can have a word like this, ongaku ka. Okay, this is a musician, all right? Ongaku, music, ongaku ka, a musician, like a professional musician or whatever. Uh, and I just like to point out that um, this kanji to me is kind of funny because uh, we got like a roof on top and this thing, uh, all those, these lines on the bottom, this is a pig, all right? It's Buddha. If I write Buddha here, you'll see. 
Okay, we kind of we got Buto in there, except not the um, Nikuzuki on the left. But I think that's kind of funny that a peak under the roof is a is your family. <laughs> anyway, don't look into that too much. All right, next one we got ma kore takai desu ne takai. So uh, also core. All right, we have to know both of these readings. Um, so tall, higher, expensive. Okay, Japanese kind of combines these things. But if you kind of think of it like when something we say something is expensive, it's got a high price. Okay, so it all just kind of means tall or high. All right. Now we also have these kind of words like this: core, core, say, core, core, say. All right, our high school student and takayama. Okay, just using it as an adjective. Takayama. All right. Next one we have. Um, actually, this is very common is in names as well. So I should probably write this one down. All right, these are you're not going to be asked to read many names. Like it's not it's not going to be important in um, in Japanese uh, exams for year twelve, but there will be some people's names that pop up every now and then. So these kind of generic names like Takayama, Tanaka. All this kind of stuff. It's it's good to um, get used to reading these because names can be very tricky. But these kind of names that you get in your twelve exam are not so bad. So Takayama, very kind of common name in Japan. Okay, next one we have what's well, Toki. I guess Toki. All right. Um, also G, of course. Maybe a lot of you would know this better as G, but really it's just our time or our hour kanji. Now it's kind of important to note with this when we when we look at this Toki kanji. I want to make this all a bit bigger. Um, kind of worried about making it bigger though. <laughs> Who knows what may happen? Mm, that's not too bad. Okay. So we have Toki. All right. Now the thing about this one is, on the left, notice we have our, our radical, and it's our he. Okay, it's our our sun or our day. Um, we did this. Um, yeah, four strokes. All right. So sun or day, and on the right we have tera. All right, it's our temple. Tera. Okay. So I used to think of it like you know back in the day. Um, I think this is kind of accurate though. Don't quote me on it. Uh, you know, the priests at the temple were kind of the only people who kept the time. They have the sundial or whatever. So you just kind of think sundial and the priests, right? These are the people who measure time. All right. So we've got a few uh, words we should load for this. So basically just time. Okay. So we read it as G. Okay. So sun ji han, 330. A uh, bit of a weird reading for this next one. All right. So this is toke. Okay. It's, it's kind of a strange reading for this, this kanji for this. But toke, this is watch, right? This is a word that can um, come up quite a lot. And we have things like ude toke, all right? Our wristwatch. But um, yeah, just kind of be aware of this. I mean, you're not really expected to know this K. I'm pretty sure, I don't remember seeing this in the list anyway. Um, but anyway, you're not really expected to know this K so much, but this means to measure something. So measure time, this is our watch. All right, uh, also got some kind of lots of exception readings kind of for this, but you know, yoji kan. All right, four hours. So we use it in lots of different time words, right? Yojikan. Okay. Just move this down. All right. Our next one is kaku. Okay. This one, for some, for some reason, a lot of people don't like this kanji. It, it looks kind of complicated, but if again, if you look up the kaki doing, it's it's not that hard. You're just kind of going from top to bottom, doing all the all the lines, and you finish off with heat. All right, so it's just a verb, right? Kaku, this is the best way to describe this kanji. Um, and also short as well. All right, so we can have the same thing. Nikkyo kaku, right? Write a diary. And toshokan, toshokan. Okay, so this is a library. So we have, this is kind of like maps or diagrams, okay? And we have writing and this is like a, a building, generally like a public building, but just a big building. So Toshioka, right? building for writings and maps and diagrams. Kind of makes sense, I guess. All right, so yeah, a bit of a tricky one. Uh, I guess we can have other words like this, but they're all... Um, um, 
Okay, these are the, the same word, basically. Alright, Shodo, Shoji, this is both calligraphy, okay? Um, yeah, so I have these ones as well, but it's both short, so no real issues there. All right, our next one is just just enough to know this as core. All right, this is um, I mean it's here written as school. I always used to think of it as school building. Uh, not that I really thought that. I, I read that somewhere, <laughs> I should say. But uh, I mean school, school building, not really much of a muchness. Now this kanji, um, if you look on the right hand side, this bit. So we have tree on the left. So I used to think like, you know, school is among the trees. That's fine, but the right hand side, this is this is actually the bit which is read as core. So there are many kanji so um, that use this as a radical. I did I not write that right? Chords? Sure. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we have this one, right? And we can see that this bit is, is the same as the right, and this is also read as core. Okay, so really good to learn this one. Lots of kanji have this as contained within it. So you can learn, you basically you can learn four or five other kanji as long as you remember that this is read as core. Okay, uh, but anyway, we've got words like gakko. We've seen this one before, you know, our kind of changing reading. It's not gaku ko. And this is a really good one to learn. A lot of people skip out on. So kojo, all right. It's actually a shortening. It's, it's actually kojo sensei. I believe I put this up when we looked at the, the core kanji, sorry, the chore kanji earlier okay but core cho sensei all right so cho here this means a leader so leader of the school right it's our principal so core cho sensei our principal all right you can get away with just calling them core cho there um i believe you know at my school uh it was i can't actually remember what we used to say but he was referred to variously as yamada kocho kocho sensei kocho you know all of these words um, you can use for, for principle. Okay, this one's pretty simple, but I forgot to put some words. Oops. All right, so we can have words like this. All right. Um, all right, so just weak. All right, whenever we hear this word shu, just kind of think of weak. All right, so we have rai shu and sen sen shu. Okay, so these words are respectively uh, next week, reishu. Okay, so we've got come here, right? Kuru. So the coming week, reishu. All right, and sen senshu. All right, so senshu last week. Okay, this is our sensei no sen this ne. And then the week before last, sen senshu. All right, and we got out. This is called a, a door no jiten, I think, but basically it repeats the previous kanji. So sen senshu. All right. Um, I guess another word worth learning is shumatsu. Alright, so a weekend. Shumatsu. Alright. And this is another one where if you, if you not not this kind of wiggly line on the outside, this is called a shinyo, but this this kind of top, the kind of square bit with the, the doyobi and the the um kuchi, this is red as shu and lots of other kanji as well. So good one to learn this one. All right, and it's only got one reading, which is really good. Okay, next one. Now, uh, this is shimeru, okay? Shimeru or shimaru, you're gonna have to know both of these readings. Did I not highlight them? Nori, sorry. Okay, shimeru or shimaru, all right? So our transitive and transitive verbs, basically. And if you just look at these sentences down here, that explains the difference between what I just said. So we have doa o shimeru. Doa o shimeru. So this is me doing it, right? Or someone else, but someone closes the door, right? The door, you know, shimeru. It's a person is doing it. And then we have doa ga shimaru. Okay, so the door shuts. So the wind blew it or whatever. Okay, or doa ga shimatteru. You know, the door is closed and it's kind of implying, well, it was open when I left. You know, someone's closed it or whatever. All right. So yeah, really good to know these two different ones. Now, um... Akeru is coming up later, it's, it's a few more strokes, but it's good to look at the difference between these two. Okay, because a lot of people get confused by this. First of all, this, the common bit, right, this kind of, these, I mean, this is a, a gate, actually, this, the common bit between these two kanji. I can write like this. Okay, it's mon. 
this is this radical actually though is called mon gamma. You don't have to know that, but I'm going to refer to it, so it's good to know. And Kamae means basically a radical which surrounds a kanji and then you have something in the middle. But so mon gamae, right? Because this kanji is mon, so mon gamae. This is, I mean, it's really hard to explain this, but this this is a kanji in and of itself. It's also a radical, okay? But they're, they're two separate things. Okay, so here we're referring to it as the radical mon gamae. Okay, so we can see we've got a gate in both of these. All right, and then we've got a... Uh, really a katakana o in here and then this kind of thing i'm not exactly sure how to describe this guy in for the arkeru but what i used to tell myself is that well this arkeru we see here oops, this has a gap in the middle okay therefore it's open all right it's open and here no gap so shut close okay this is how i tell the difference between these two so yeah, we'll come across Arcade, I believe it must be pretty soon. Yeah, it's in the next one, 12 strokes. Okay, so it'll be up in the next video, but Shimeru and Arcade. All right, um, yeah, you don't have to know the, the Onyomi for this one. Okay. Yeah, getting a few drop frames, it looks like. Sorry if it's lagging a bit. I might re-watch this video, and if the live stream's kind of crap, I'll um, I'll upload the actual video. I'm doing a local recording, so I'll just upload it there, if it's kind of annoying for you guys. Um, all right, so we have Oshieru. Oshieru. All right, this is to teach something, okay? Now, we also have to learn Onyomi for this one as well. Okay, now don't worry about faith or doctrine. I mean, we use it a lot to talk about religion. I was debating whether to put this in here, but. Um, okay, so we can. This is very common. It's, it's not really. I don't think it's very likely to come up in uh, year 12. But anyway, Christo Kyo, right? This is Christianity. All right, so basically, we take this word at Kyo. So we have Isuramu Kyo. Bukkyo, um, so Islam and Buddhism, um, you know, lots of religions have this on the end because it's the teachings of this person, right? Or the whatever. All right. So, yeah, teach. We can get by with this. So, it's good to kind of look at this kind because this is when a lot of people make mistakes with writing. Uh, so, we have do on the top and we have ko down the bottom. All right. Now, it's kind of hard to see, but let me just make it really big. Okay, so we have do and ko down the bottom here, and we have a line through it. So I used to say, um, children have no, okay, this is a katakana no, right? Children have no school on Saturday. All right, and then we just have this thing over here. <laughs> All right, sorry, I don't really have a mnemonic for this right bit. I just, the, the bit was, for me, was always the left bit. I could remember the right bit had this, uh, I'm actually not sure what it's called, but mata or something, this thing is, I think. Um, I did used to know the name for it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, got words like this. Kyo shitsu. Okay. Our uh, classroom. All right. Good. This is definitely a word that can come up in year 12. Both of these kanji are on the list. We've seen shitsu before. Uh, and we can have stuff, phrases like this, right? Oshiete kureta. Right? So, I, I, someone was given the favor of being taught something. And Christo Kyo, I mentioned this one before. Christianity. All right, our last one. Pretty short video today, actually, because, uh, like I said, not many kanji left. I mean, looking at my list. Where is my cursor? Looking at my list. I have, like, 16 left, 15 or 16 left, so we'll be able to probably... We might do all the rest of them in the next video. So here we go. All right, but this last one, we really just have to know this for the word unten, okay? We just have to know this as 10. Got lots of different verbs for this. Don't have to know any of these for year 12. Uh, I mean, maybe korobu. Yeah, I, I don't think so then. All right, but um, oh, maybe. Actually, I should probably highlight this. I'm pretty sure I've heard this before in one exam, maybe once. But korobu is kind of to fall over. So yeah, um, this can come up a little bit, but 10 really is the main one we want to know for this. So we have a word like this. Actually, a lot of you will probably need to know this word this year. I've noticed uh, I have students from all different schools and they're all kind of, um, especially in WA at least, 
they're going big on the inshu unten. All right, our drink driving. So there's a lot of um, words to do with driving that we want to be aware of. And uh, unten menkyo, this is a driver's license. Now you definitely don't have to know menkyo as kanji, but uh, you have to know the word, I would say. But yeah, unten menkyo, so a driver's license. And the verb we use for this is toru, all right? So unten menkyo o toru, get my driver's license. Unten menkyo toritai, I want to get my driver's license, okay? And we also have this one as well. Uh, this, so this is kaiten sushi, kaiten sushi. All right, so our um, conveyor belt. Uh, sushi, sushi train, restaurant, whatever they're called, you know, we're basically where you can all, um, order the sushi and it comes on a little conveyor belt. And uh, these are really great places to go to in Japan. I know it's kind of, um, might seem a bit, I don't know, it might seem a bit cheesy because it's like, you know, what do you think of Japan? Sushi. But I would really, if you, if you, if you even like sushi a little bit, definitely go to a, a proper Kaiten sushi restaurant. And when I say proper, I mean, I don't really care which one you go to, but... There's, there's a few like chain restaurants. So like Sushi Door is one I really used to like. And you know, they've got the computers where you can, uh, you know, you can grab stuff off the conveyor belt, but they've got a menu. So if there's stuff that you actually want, you just put it in the little screen at your table and then it'll, um, <laughs> it'll uh, come on a special plate, like with your table number or whatever on it. So you can, you know, that's yours. And of course, being Japan, no one stick, nick, nicks your, um, no one nicks your little order off the conveyor belt, even though they could. Even if they want it, they'll just order their own. Okay, so that's about it. All right, this is our last one. Uh, yeah, so hopefully we'll be able to wrap up. Hopefully, but I'm pretty sure we'll be able to wrap this up next week. Um, so yeah, it's been, been a good series, this one. Uh, lots of words. And um, I mean, I would really recommend even this whole process. I mean, I don't think I really need to learn these kanji anymore, but this whole process of creating this Google Doc looking them up in um, the dictionary and kind of going over them again. This in and of itself is super good learning. So uh, watching this video and passively reading this Google Doc is okay, but you always want to be trying to do things, you know, write kanji, look stuff up, you know, really get that brain activated. And it's very easy to convince yourself, oh yeah, I know this kanji, but you know, try and, try and write them down. You know, I would recommend every single kanji I've gone through uh, like basically in bold, you should write them at least, I mean, at a minimum once, but you should really be writing these 10, 20, 30 times. Okay. How long does it take to write a kanji? Not very long. I mean, I made this list in, well, I don't want to tell you how long, but it didn't take me very long to make this list. Okay. So for you to just write these kanji out would take even less time. And I know you might not have a lot of time, but if you spend 10, 20 minutes every other day writing out these kanji, I guarantee you, you're going to learn them uh, a lot better than if you just read the sheet. Okay. And basically in year 12, you just have to read a lot of these kanji in certain words. So if you get uh, really, if you can look at a word and definitely know, yep, that's kyo shitsu. Yep. That's unten. You know, if you know these, that's the only way that they're going to come up. They're not going to ask you to read them in any other crazy combination. So if you do have a chance, I would really make, recommend you do that. Okay, that's about it from me. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Please smash that like button. Uh, give me a subscribe to the channel as well. I'd really appreciate uh, any subscriptions you guys can do. It's free. You just need a, I mean, I'm not exactly sure, but at least you just need a Gmail account. I think you can use any account really, but uh, Gmail account's easy and it's free as well. And uh, then you get notifications when I go live. So I'm not exactly sure how my internet situation is going to, um, turn out from here. My internet's finally connected at my house, but I'm not sure if it's going to work with live streaming. Either way, I'll be still doing pre-recorded videos and just uploading them on Monday morning. Anyway, so you still be getting content from me. It just may not be live anymore, but I hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, please share to all your friends. Really appreciate some shares on Facebook or, uh, I don't know, Twitter. I don't really use Twitter. Probably should make an account, but just share the video around anyone, you know, who's uh, wants to learn Japanese, got interest in Japanese, Maybe even your friends in your class. I would really recommend, uh, well, not recommend, but I would really uh, appreciate it if you could share the video because I want more people to see these things. And the more people that see them, I'll get some ideas about what kind of content people want to see and then I can produce good Japanese content for you guys. All right, that's enough from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.